Okay, welcome to Urban X TV. Welcome back. Urban X TV in the building. Got oh, like that back in the building. Subscribe. Like, share, subscribe, all that Like, stuff. share, subscribe, all the goodness. Okay, so, <clears throat> all right, we're going to get straight into it. LeVar Ball. What do you think? LeVar Ball. I think LeVar Ball has our people into a sunken place. Now, what do I mean by this? Yes, I mean, please, all please. of the hype going on about LeVar Ball poking his chest out, going against the system, bucking the system, it's not necessarily true. We as black people have gotten to a tendency of living vicariously through other people's actions. So we no longer get off the couch or get from in front of our computer to do anything no more. Right. Action is no longer needed to fulfill your dreams. You can fulfill your dreams by watching others. We do it all the time in music, uh, when we watch movies, and that has put us as a collective into a sunken place. Okay. So LeVar Ball, what he chooses to do with his family should have no bearing on your existence. But yet we feel empowered because he's beating his chest and saying he's gonna do his own shooting. Let me be clear. What, how he raises his children, him trying to be an entrepreneur, I'm with all of that. I don't want the trolls to get on me. It's not what you do, it's how you do it. Right. And I feel he has wrote a check that his son can't cash by his uh, braggadocious ways. And let's be clear, he didn't try to beat or buck the system. He wanted to get in bed with Nike. Let's be clear, let's, right. let's call it for what it is. Right. And when Nike said a billion dollars for a kid who played one year in high school, I mean in college, and we ain't seen him do nothing on the court, you out of your mind. He wanted a partnership. Now a partnership, and I'm worth 20 billion, that means you need to be coming to the table when assets is equal or, you know, so right, to speak. Right, right. So when they balked or reneged on that, then he went in his bag and came out with, we gonna do our own sneaker. And I think that's a great idea if you know how to manufacture, produce, ship, and all of that when it comes to sneakers. So I have no problem with him being an entrepreneur. He said his price at 495, bang, 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 bang. But he's been going on these TV shows and he's been acting Barkley-like, so to speak. Okay. And I don't feel he has the right footing for that. And as a result, our people have somehow translated that into, oh, he's a rebel. He's for black people. He got a white wife. Bing! Let's keep that in mind. Okay. So before we get into he's, you know, for black people and doing all this, no, he's about his sons. Now, I will say this. My first impression of him was that his children were afraid of him. The way... Uh, Lonzo would never speak in his presence no matter what his father said struck me as you know and then maybe he himself LeVar Ball is living vicariously through his own children right because he played see that. yeah he played ball and because what are the chances of all three of your sons wanting to play basketball for the rest of their lives while it may sound simple it's not true I got two sons that graduated from college one played basketball and the other one played college football and you know what I'm saying so I know that chances of all three of my sons wanting to follow in each other's trail and they so close together has a more to do with dad and right. we never hear from moms right you know what i mean so he came across as somebody who puts fear in his children's heart and they're living out his dream that's the vibe i got now when 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 the pilgrim the girl right. said this yeah, yeah that was interesting because she said she that. said the same exact same thing, thing that i said you know what i mean right. but they jumped all on her like you know she said something foul she saw it if i could see it everybody else could see it okay so what happens is he goes on the herd show, and the minute the pilgrim starts uh, doing her job, so to speak, right. uh, you know, he tells her stay in her lane. Now I didn't take that as racial. Uh, you know, a lot of Charlemagne and them turned that into a, a racial thing. Well, they turned it into a racial thing after she said, "Are you threatening me? I feel threatened." And they said, like she's basically doing. You know, she's basically using her white woman privilege I guess I can see how that could be because to make him look like the scary black man because those are trigger words and he even said I'm afraid of you right 
You know what I'm saying? But did he mean because she was a white woman? Because he got a white wife at home. True. So we True. understand, True. you know, that that's what makes the dynamics a little a little bit different. Okay. He's got a white wife at home, a probably a docile white wife at home. And when he told her to stay in her lane, I found it to be a little bit more sexist than I did like a he was afraid of a white girl. Interesting. So to speak. So my thing also is when you want to go against somebody like Nike and Under Armour and all of that kind of stuff, you need to have a, a, a great footing to do so. Right. Now, Stefan Marbury was inside the machine. He was inside the construct at the peak of his game. And he decided, I'm pulling the rug on this. These Starberry sneakers, which you refused to wear they, because they was $15, but they were made from the same material, right? right. He, he was revealing the whole game, and you have to be careful when you do that. They kill his father in the stands. I don't care what nobody said. His father was at the game. They gave that nigga a heart attack at the game, and then they ousted his ass to China for pulling off that because these are conglomerates. If I came out with a car that ran on water and I jumped on CNN and said, fuck everybody in the building, my car's run on water, how long before I, I got into a car crash before you think I would make it home? Yeah. I'll wait 20 minutes. Wait for it. Because those are trillion dollar industries. So I can't tell LeVar how to go about his business, but I thought just me, maybe his son, he should be quiet because he going to be in the stands while the NBA is going to target his son. Don't think the ball players right. ain't going to get after him. They definitely are. They're going to get after him, right? Maybe he signed a deal for 30, 40 million. Three years standard deal with Nike. Mm -hmm. They all do it. Learn the inner workings of the business. How to manufacture, how to ship, because there is the, the linear aspect of business, which is you go find the materials and you go legitly find some. And then there's the covert way that things are done, which keep these conglomerates in power. Right. All right. So I felt that maybe he should have went that route. Then took those resources because I don't think he has enough resources to make sneakers. I think he made a prototype. Then he poked his chest out and we all felt empowered. He bringing out his own sneaker. No, he's not. Because then he upped the price to, to Nike to $3 billion. Right. Why? Right. Because he's playing a shell game. He knows nothing about manufacturing sneakers, in my humble opinion. But I do applaud the uh, position of putting yourself in power to run your own business. I'm doing it now with Momi Media. What we're trying to do, we're trying to take our strengths. You're a writer. I'm a writer. Um, our son, uh, Eli, wants to do podcasts. Uh, my wife is videographer. We're trying to find a niche in which we can all fit in. But at the same time, we're learning the business aspect. And we have to remember these Europeans are 400 years ahead of us in running business. This is why black businesses don't do as well as they should. If I had a 400 year start on you doing something, I have mastered all the ins and outs of it. LeVar Ball also reminds me of Dame Dash. You know, Dame, but Dame Dash was inside the, the construct. Right. He saw who the beast was, and then he started flexing on them. And the end result is, is where LeVar Ball is going to be, on the sideline somewhere. Because this is a machine in place. Back to the sunken place. We have a tendency to go to a movie and rah when we kill white people on the screen or all of this old kind of stuff and go home and do nothing. And that's our problem in this day and time. We have to remove ourselves from the sunken place and focus on ourselves individually because what little Uzi Vert is wearing and saying has no bearing on my existence. If it does, then my life ain't worth shit. Right. Oh, man, I can't get my life together because little Uzi Vert got a dress on. You understand my point? We give too much of our core center to things outside of ourselves. And then we want to know why we can't beat the system. It's because we are the system. Every time you pay your phone bill, you support white supremacy. Every time you pot, put gas in your car, you support white supremacy. I don't care how you dress it up. <laughs> These are the very conglomerates right. <laughs> that we're trying to beat, and yet we keep fueling them and wondering why we haven't moved. So LeVar Ball is the latest one that has us in the sunken place because there's been debates and almost lectures given on the greatness of what he is doing. Stop it. 
All right. He wanted a partnership. He wanted, first of all, if his son is going to sign with the NBA, that's a contract in blood already. You already know how the NBA get down. And then we have a tendency to uh, scrutinize those who are in the game. You got to get in the game to change the game. In my humble opinion, I agree. Even Neo had to go inside the matrix to affect the matrix. You can't be on the sidelines just getting energy off what people are doing. I do the same thing with sports. I'm like, right now, we got a chance to close out uh, Boston. Well, who the fuck is we? I ain't leaving my couch. I'm on my couch eating corn chips, talking about, yo, we got to get this shit done. And that's the problem with us. We live too much. The only one having that ultimate experience is LeBron James and the players on the court. Now, now I'm not saying we're not supposed to get inspiration from other people, but I could never experience what LeBron James is going through. No matter how HD my television is with the curb and all, no matter how, right. I would never be able to experience it because I'm at my house. And we have a tendency as a people to Malcolm X has been dead 50 years, 52 years to be exact. No disrespect of what he did. I named you after him because of his principles and what he stood for. Right. But he can't help me now. He's gone. You know what I mean? Right. So we have to get into who we are. We're the only ones that's going to be able to pull ourselves out of a sunken place and stop falling for the okie doke over. And if you're waiting for Jesus, he's been gone 2,000 years. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So we have to be careful on how we go about this. And LeVar Ball, I guarantee in three years, we'll see where this LeVar Ball thing is. Because now you got a new T-shirt out. Yeah, stay in your stay lane. Stay in your lane. $50 T-shirts for women. After the girl asked him, why don't you have product for women? I, I thought her questioning was legit. Let's not make this. Now, I can get real racial and just make up racial shit. Yeah, you know, that bitch should have stayed in a corner because she's a devil and she was behind him. And I could do all of that. But as a journalist, even if it was a black lady who asked the same question, I thought they were legit questions. How many sneakers are you selling? Uh, are you? Do you plan to do something for women? Right? Okay. Nike and all of them got stuff for women. Right. But it turned into... But... Bing, white wife. So we know, you know, he ain't, his children look like goddamn bananas. But let's go. Next question. Okay. So you saying we're in a sunken place because we're living vicariously through other people who are worried about other things. So I want to ask you about Trump. Okay. But I want to ask you in a different way. I want to ask you, like, what do you think? Because it's new stuff coming out every day about the man. Every single day. Absolutely. There's always something new, right? Absolutely. So, what do you think black people's temperament should be during this time? Because we, frankly, we have no power over the situation, but people get angry like we can do something. Again, this, this goes back to it having no bearing on your existence, no matter how much you think it does. When you step into that voting booth, for those who do that, what you're saying is you believe in this process. I do not believe in that process. Doing the same things and expecting a different result is a form of insanity. We've been voting for presidents for the last 100 years or however, we, 60 years we've been able to vote and nothing has changed. Our condition hasn't changed. The only ones who can change our conditions are us. So we thrive in spite of racism, in spite of discrimination, in spite of police shootings. We're the only people who can take what is considered bottom feeder stuff and create an industry out of it to feed the whole community. They flood our community with drugs to try to kill us. We become drug kingpins. You see what I'm saying? And start record labels. All of that off drug money. So no matter what condition we as a people are in, we're the only ones going to get ourselves out of it. But we are the only people who can endure so much regardless of the external things going on around us and still survive. That's how I know we are God because Europeans could not be able to manage anything of, of, of this capacity. We turn everything into swag. Right. You name it, we can swag it out. You know what I'm saying? Flat out shit with crack, this, that. We make music, we party, we dance, and these people are confused or how we're partying, dancing, and keeping a smile on our face in spite.
spite of all of these things. Now, there are a portion of our people who suffer heavy from victim consciousness. That means they can't achieve anything in this world because racism and all of these things, and they blame somebody outside of themselves for what it is that they can and cannot achieve. Those people fall by the wayside. They turn 50, 60, 70 years old. They never get off the couch or get from in front of their computer blogging about the same bullshit. And then there are those who say, yeah, this is a racist society. How do I navigate through this and still own a, a billion dollar company? How do I navigate through this and still become the greatest athlete in the world? And even though I'm an athlete and people think I'm a puppet and they're using me, I still make 400 million and build schools all around the country to empower people. So we have to take the worst of situations and make the best. I can go in all day on Diddy's faults, and there are a lot of them, right? But he's building charter schools. He owns Revolt and is employing black people. And then when his story is told 20 years from now, 30 years from now, it's children are gonna be praising him because it was through these schools that he built that gave them an opportunity. And let's not get on LeBron James. I know we got the big LeBron James, Jordan thing going on and all that. I get all that kind of stuff, but at the end of the day, look what he's doing in Akron, Ohio. Right. P putting people to school. Now he's, and next year he's building his own schools. All right? Yeah. By them using him as a puppet, so to speak, he's going to take that situation and swag that shit out the way we do and build schools to help people. How can we be mad at that? And I'm a big critic of Jay-Z because he, you know, he bragged about using drug money and this and that to be the so-called mogul he is, but he's almost worth a billion dollars now. He married the woman of his dreams and he has foundations started with his moms all around the country that a lot of people don't know about that are in positions to help people. Or you can sit on the outside and talk shit. Donald Trump is no clown. We, better, we need to stop acting like this man is a clown. Anytime the media is making fun of something, it's a media propaganda scandal to get you thinking that this man is a clown. George Bush was a no clown. You can't pull off the biggest terrorist heist in this country and, and get away with it and be a clown. So we need to stop with this clown and step back because this is not your war. We're going to be here. We was here before Trump. We're going to be here after Trump. But if you put your soul into thinking, oh, if, if we would have had Hillary in, things would be better. You are in a sunken place. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You are in a sunken place to think any of these European knuckle draggers care about the condition of black people other than the fact they want to use our energy, our swag to propel them for whatever greater cause that they have going on. So the Trump situation, I just watch. I watch his wife swack his, smack his hand away two, three times yeah. this week. I watch him jump in front of NATO yeah. to get on the camera. I'm just laughing. It's entertainment to me because I'm not going to allow anything outside of me to control my destiny as much as possible. The things I can control, I control the things I can't. I can't. Life is really simple when we put it in that perspective. Right. Right? I'm trying to be in control of my destiny to be the best father, husband, brother, author, lecturer that I can possibly be nothing more, nothing less. If everybody just said, you know what, I got a man up on my own shit, collectively we move. But if you think this world, one day a light is going to turn on and there's no white people and there's no homosexuals and transgenders and pedosexuals and uh, you know, all of this stuff is going to disappear and black people are going to be holding hands and happy. You are in a sunken place. I'm not in a sunken place. I was at one point. Okay. But I'm constantly uh, reviewing self, reevaluating self. No more than self. I can't control when niggas is wearing rompers. out thinking that shit is cool. It's another distraction. You wearing rompers? again, has no bearing on my existence. Yeah. I'm not going to be home crying to niggas is wearing rompers. I don't give a fuck. If you want to have your nuts split down the middle, <laughs> nigga, that's on you. Right? I can only control what I can control. So that's my disposition on Trump and what's been going on with LeVar Ball or, you know, us being in a sunken place in particular. And then... Uh you, have, you wrote an article about this. Yes, I'm, I'm releasing the article uh, tonight 
on urbanx.nyc, with which I'll go more in depth right. of the sunken place, uh, you know, that we've been in. Again, a, a condition that enables us to feel empowered when doing nothing at all. Okay. You know what I mean? We march and go home. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? We get all blown out of steam when Kendrick Lamar drops one line about black being the color. And we go, oh, shit, this nigga's deep. You're in a sunken place, right? right? When you revere conscious rappers who are signed to the system because they wrote a few rhymes about the system and you think we moving forward, you're in a goddamn sunken place. Or the term sunken place from the movie... Yes. That's that's right, what I'm saying. Right, right. You in a place where somebody else is driving your vehicle. Somebody you ain't using it, somebody else is using right. it. And you know even, what I'm saying? Even the from from the movie get out, the the hoopla, I guess. The hoopla around the movie. Around the movie, right. About the movie's about warning us to stay away from white women. The director, producer, uh, and writer of the movie is married to a fucking white woman. Right. How ironic is that? And we still, ah! The soundtrack, Redbone, that's my yeah. joint right there. <laughs> Stay well, it's fire. He's married to a white woman too. <laughs> so he told us to stay woke, he married to, I had a dude tell me Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and all of this stuff is using my information, they're tracking us, they're using face recognition technology, and he sent that message from a goddamn iPhone. <laughs> You in a goddamn sunken place, dude. This is how ironic this is. We, you telling me this on the same devices you warning me about. That's the world we live in now, man. And now the internet has made it very easy for trolls to just have an existence. A lot of these people were anonymous, and now they have Twitter fingers, which gets them in a place where their voice can be heard. But they never leave the couch to do anything. You know what I mean? And that's the difference of what's going on. And, and, and everyone has to find, get themselves out of their own sunken place. Right. Because some people are real deep. Some of the niggas ain't got a chance. They just <laughs> so gone, it's a wrap. Yeah. And then there are those who are understanding, wow, I, I, I need to stop making excuses about... Everything. Now, uh, uh, Ben Carson made a about, statement. I was about to ask you about that. Now, he made a statement right. about... Poverty, Poverty is a state, state of mind. mind. Ding, 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 ding. Poverty is a goddamn state of mind. Ask any hustler on the corner. These niggas ain't thirsty. Why? Because their state of mind is they refuse to be thirsty. You may not agree on how they get in their money, but poverty collectively, metaphysically, is a state of mind. Now, there will be the literalists who take that literal, oh, well, Look, look at the starving people in Africa. What about this? They don't have no reference point of anything else. So when you talk in state of mind, if I've always been hungry and thirsty and I don't have a reference point for anything other, then I'm always going to be hungry and thirsty. And that's what? A state of mind. Right? But if there is a reference point, bing. Oh, these niggas is getting it over here. Well, now let me change my mindset to see how I can get it. Mental vibration, energy, all changes, all is mental. So I didn't get offended by Ben Carson's yeah, statement. I, did, I didn't either. I was like, yeah. you know, that, that's a very good statement yeah, right I, there. I because that, that's the mentality we have yeah. to have. We have to understand certain things in this reality are not going to change, but you can change as a result changing your universe, and that's all you should be concerned about. Those who are carrying the nation, I need to wake up the nation. That's a heavy burden for anybody to carry. And when you carry that burden, it gets heavier and heavier and heavier until you're in a sunken place from trying to carry all of these people to righteousness. Carry yourself to righteousness. And whoever follow it because you become a beam of light, you know what I mean? Because truth be told, we don't hate hustlers and ballers and thoughts. We don't. We hate the fact that they have no fear, that they go for everything they want. They flying around in G5 jets drinking champagne on the red carpet and quiet is kept. 
We all want that to some capacity. Right. Maybe not the same exact things, but while you're sitting on your job heated, wiping down tables at McDonald's and shit and criticizing them for going for what they want, that's on you. That's why we root for the bank robber in a movie. Because he's going against the system and he, you know what I mean? And we get for two hours, get to dream about something we could have did if we just got off the goddamn couch and turned the TV off and was like, okay, what's my skill and how am I going to put this in effect? Right. right? Yeah. I like to know when there are racist people in my midst. I had no problem with the Confederate flag. That's great. Because I can see it and go, oh shit. We're not going in there, as opposed to me going in there and they making a special batch of soup for me or something that I don't know about. So don't let these things rile you up because none of it really means anything. And like I said, Ben Carson's statements were on point. It's a state of mind. You can choose to run with it or not. All right, Black Dot. Thank you, yeah. as always. As always, subscribe. Subscribe, Urban X TV. We're gonna do this every week. We're gonna I'm gonna let the young guard pick my mind for things and we're gonna get right to it. You're and we're gonna get to him. It's time You're to ready. get to you. You already. You already know.